Ankündigung. Äh, 59. Nee. 298. Danke. 112. Danke. Ja, so passt schon. <lacht> Ja. Ja. Was hast du für dich? Ja. Neun für drei. Danke. Ja. 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 Drei, vier, neun. Zwei, sechs, null.
So it all started in Contiolati on the 30th of November with a 15-kilometer individual. Uh, this is only the second individual race of the season, and it is going to be Sophie Chabot of France who gets underway first, who was very quick last week in Pukuka. Some of the best skiing we've seen from her, and we'll see how she gets on today. 23 now from Bajev, and a very good prone scores, just under 80% in the stand. Uh, could be an exciting race for her. Yes, you mentioned her ski speed. She was the fastest. I couldn't believe it in this pursuit competition. She was chasing, but she's that determined. She can dig that deep. Camilla Zuk, 0-0 uh, zero, zero in the last two sprint events. If she can do that three times in a row, uh, she might, will she get somewhere near her best? She's got a PB of six, which is very impressive. I'm not sure she's quite on that form, probably a minute or so uh, behind the best on a sprint, which makes it two minutes on uh, the individual. Now, Davidova, the world champion, sixth in the Olympics, seventh in Contiolati, pretty consistent at this four-shoot race. Oh, she certainly is, and, and uh, mostly Davidova keeps control, the discipline on the track. You have to have such a focused mind from start to finish. There's Ego Hjelland, the Norwegian coach for the Czech Republic team, and I think he's done a great job. At, 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 he's very calm himself, and he, he tries to instill that calm in the Czech team shooting. And uh, another of his charges just about a start, Jessica Yislova, who... Uh, lives in Jablonec, it's actually the same place as Davidova, so they do a lot of training together, and again she shot the perfect score in the last two sprints, so uh, things looking good just outside the top 30 in Pakuka, a 0-0 today, should see her inside that mark <laughs> Is this Vera late for the start? She certainly look, looks like smiling, relaxing but a little late What do you think she's been distracted by? <laughs> <laughs> Just getting the mind focus uh, <laughs> fixed. OK. Mary Ada now, 35 years old. And uh, she is certainly skiing fast enough to hit the top three. She's had two wins in her career. It's been a while. But, uh, you know, good points scored in Pakuka. And I think the form we saw before Christmas is still there. It is. It is indeed. Uh, Elisa Gasparin, 19th at the World Championships in Pocuca. That was uh, two years ago. She only missed one. In fact, so many of her 15-kilometer races, she only misses one. She does that today. It could well be a top five. Could be a podium. Yeah. Oh, She's now, oh bad start. That. Now, what happened there? Well, was that a, a breakage or well, a... The, the track is so firm today, Patrick. Yeah. As you mentioned, it's been salted all around the track. It's very, very hard surface. And this is just a slip out. Whoa, down it goes. Uh, that reminds me of uh, the conditions in Le Grand Bonnard, where it was super icy. Uh, and uh, I wonder whether we're going to see someone else go down. Dorothea Vera will have seen exactly what happened. She'll take it easy. Now, Mike, she won here back in 2018, the last time we had an individual in Rupolding. She did. And, and you know, that's, that's a mindset positive. So she would have thought about the race last night. She will have certainly remembered back to that positive day here and try and replicate Mart Osbu Roisland. And uh, great to have her back on the tour. Raced in Pukuka, 16th and up to 8th in the pursuit. I think that's a pretty good reintroduction to the World Cup. Uh, she's had COVID, she's had other viruses. Uh, the body's been under a lot of punishment recently, Roisland, and probably doing exactly the right thing, staying at home in Froland rather than uh, racing here. Froland, incidentally, on the, the east coast of Norway. Uh, just down south of Oslo. Altitude of 75 metres, so she'll be glad we're not up, <laughs> not up in, uh, in, in the heights. <laughs> she will be next week. Although some of the athletes, as uh, Todorova, the 24-year-old, gets underway. Aggressive start. And one of many to have hit 90% plus in the prone position. The, the stats are still very, very good. Tandrevold, fourth in the World Cup standings at the moment. She is just under 200 points behind Julius Simon. As we uh, come through, once we've finished today's race, we are past the halfway mark of the World Cup season.
Tandra Volt, eighth at the Olympics in this event. She missed one target. Had she hit that one target, she would have been 2.7 seconds off the gold. But many athletes can uh, look at that one shot missed and feel the pain. So the track's going to hold firm today, Patrick, much, much more so than in the men's race with the frost last night and with the salting to, to harden up the track. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of using salt, but as far as keeping it fairly even for the whole field uh, and, and maybe persuade some of the better skiers to go in group two at least instead of cramming them all into group one, which is exactly where Julia Simon wants to be. It's where she is. And uh, she has now had seven out of ten races finishing in the top three. It's a fabulous run of results from her. Yes, Julia Simon, every time you see her on her rifle, be it zeroing or in a race, there's a sense of discipline and calm. I was just wondering that, whether that was the sense you got when I was around, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Perhaps not, perhaps not. <laughs> now... Uh, just looking for some of the split times, anything leaping out at you in the early stages? Yes, I think Chevaux, we mentioned that on Saturday, she set the fastest ski time, not by much, just a second or two ahead of Denise Herman Vic, uh, but certainly uh, sharp again today. And I think that's, uh, I think Chevaux will probably sit, you know, about the three seconds slower than the fastest on the first track, on the first lap, I should say. Now, the crowd suddenly come to life as Denise Herman starts her run. Uh, they will be hoping for great things today. Uh, Germany, I think uh, Benny Doll did OK, sixth yesterday. It was good performance, missing just one target. But they only had one in the top ten. Roman Rees was down in 13 and Kern in 17. Uh, are there women capable of beating three in the top 17? I think they are, I really do. And Denise Herman with the Olympic medals uh, around her neck, she knows how to manage herself. And two from her 10 victories in biathlon have come in this event. The same statistics really as uh, Ligrid. And we know he manages every single individual race so well. I didn't expect this time deficit, but of course Elisa fell at the start and it's amazing how much energy and uh, annoyed energy you waste through that little, little frustration. Yeah, and she, she didn't get up particularly quickly, which I think probably explains 10 seconds of the 15 lost. Now, Chabot with uh, an opportunity to put some pressure, certainly on her teammates. Let's have a look. John Paul looking on. They're all over the place. Ah, that's well, it. I, I think that was coming, wasn't it, Mike? You're right. As soon as you said that, I thought she's, you know, with that kind of spread of your routine, it really does build in a high, high risk of missing at least one. And, and it comes with experience. Yes, yeah, she's very, Chavot, very experienced at the IBU Cup. And uh, as a junior, we saw that. And now it's the big league. Just a little more calm, I think, through the rifle. I think everyone with their fingers crossed that Vitozzi can hit some prone targets today. Uh, we do not want to return to last season. And although that you know the start of the season has been brilliant, Mike, she had a nightmare in Pukuka. We'll talk about that when she gets to her first shoot. Let's focus on Marquita Davidova. Shelland watching on. So important to have a calm and five out of five start to this big race. Oh, well, that's a mile off in biathlon terms. Yeah, and that was that was the, the, the smallest margin in terms of time between the shots. So I think she rushed that fourth one and has paid a hefty price. I was surprised to see that. I thought Davidova, she, she knows how to manage this race well. And that was a very unsettled, maybe even pressure being felt on her shoulders to, to miss by that much. 
Marieda. Good look down the range just to see what the wind is doing. Uh, and Simon Shemp pointed that out. He was sort of the expert on the IBU site this week and saying, you know, it's the wind isn't generally a problem here, but you do have to keep particular a particular eye out for any shifts and changes. And uh, Ada taking in all the information possible. Ski speed is good. She's three and a half seconds slower than Chavot, but Chavot missed one. So an opportunity to go into the lead. And Mari Ader, the, one of the most experienced biathletes in the field. Look at the amount of time, just calm. 19 seconds to the first shot, 3.2 3 in between each shoot. A total of 36, that is quite slow in modern biathlon terms, but she'll go out happy that she's put down all five. Yeah, you said 33, 34, uh, 36 is certainly giving away time, but five are down. She's got the green light. Who's going to complain? Certainly not in her mindset. She'll be feeling good. Well, Tandervold uh, is, going, is aggressive on the tracks again today. We saw that on Sunday in the relay, or the single mix relay where she won with Christensen. Dorothy Vera. There she is. 12 seconds. Two point three, two point five, two point two, one point nine, just for good measure between four and five and a twenty four eight. May not be the fastest, but it's good enough, giving away no advantage. Dorothy Vera and uh, gets through the first shoot unscathed, which is always a little bit of a relief. And then you can start to believe in your own abilities. Eight, of course, is Marta Olsbu Roysland. What a season she had last year. What an Olympics she had. Oh, that's solid. That is solid. Do you know, I, I really think, Patrick, she's back with a vengeance. Uh, the pressure is not on her shoulders because the expectations are low, and that really does help in biathlon. Is she going green? She is. Two seconds inside. The perfect start, and she was second fastest into the range, only by two seconds behind... Uh, Chavot still setting the fastest first lap time. Yeah, she was five seconds down, though, Mike, at 1.9. Uh, Marieda was very quick at 1.9, but then it eased up massively coming in to shoot, which uh, I guess uh, explains why she was shooting so well. Tandra Vold, you would expect to hit five, and the ski speed, it, almost exactly the same as uh, Marta Osbu Roisland. I expected that first shot to be re released at about 16. It was 14.5. Very relaxed. Just watching the face. Some, some, some of the athletes give you confidence. Others make you very nervous. <laughs> she is not one of them. And uh, Tandervold is out. She was two and a half seconds down on the best coming in. Uh, and she's going to have doubled that margin. But she's still in the running. And uh, she goes into third place. Roislin one, Vera two, Tandrenvold three, and Marieda now pushed down to four as we have a look at Hannah Erberg. World Cup leader. She set the fastest time into the range, but only by one tenth of a second ahead of Chavot. Jean-Paul, there he is. He's done such a brilliant job to reshape her completely in terms of her shooting. I love that little two-breath sequence and uh, limited movement on the second breath, which just covers the tire targets, and off she goes. And straight to the top of the leaderboard. So France ahead of Norway, ahead of Italy, with Norway in fourth as well. Finland are there, the Czech Republic in the top six, Austria, uh, Switzerland in the top ten. A great mix of nations, and Germany will be wanting to join them. Hermann Vick, wow, eight seconds up on Julia Simon coming in. That is rapid, and she's. I, I think she adjusted the sight there one click left, accounting for a slight breeze from the left. Both in the eight rings so far. That probably on the outside. That was uh, a, a, a nice 10. 
just to calm the nerves of the fans and down goes the fifth target so the lead could change yet again Herman Vick not quite as quick in the rain as Julius Simon uh, her margin 7.9 she comes out with a margin of 2.5 that was so interesting and uh, th 31 seconds as opposed to Dorothea Vera probably around uh, 24 seconds but uh, Vic uh, Herman Vic can make the time back on the, the next uh, rotation of three kilometres. Yeah, she's certainly on good form. I think uh, coming to her best form of the season, to be honest, Mike, was a little surprised that she didn't have the ski speed up in Contialati at the start of the season, but she is coming back with a vengeance. Uh, Marieda, 13.04 on the clock, going through 4.9. Remember, it's a three-kilometre loop here. That was interesting. Her coach, uh, Marieda, uh, she hit five out of five. The coach running alongside with a magnetic board, showing her the fall of the shots within the golf ball size target, clearly... They weren't happy that she... I can't remember. I thought she was quite accurate. Maybe they were slightly right, so she'll bear that in her mind for the next prone. Would you like that information before the stand shoot, or would you like that they held it until the next of the prone shoots? I was just thinking of that. I, w I would like to see it actually straight away, but then you've got so much going on in your mind, you have to remember if there is adjustment required to do that, not this time for the stand, but the next time for the prawn. Sophie Chavot in the stand shoot as we see Lisa Teresa Hauser hit the first four and miss number five. Big mistake from her and a mistake from Chavot as well. That's a shame. That uh, is going to damage her chances yet again. Remember, she had a mistake in the first prone, so that's two minutes added. Uh, I don't think we're going to see her in the certainly not top five, even with the ski speed she's shown recently. I think top ten might be a bit of a stretch. And we, uh, thought, uh, we thought Johannes <laughs> Tingis was going to struggle to win yesterday. <laughs> Missing two these days in biathlon. For an athlete to miss two and still win, it's unusual. He's that fast. Yeah, Interesting. He's, a, he's a, cl a clear minute ahead of everyone, Mike. Oh, it's, it's beautiful biathlon. Interesting how the spectators started singing after Herman Vick went into the lead. One mistake for Davidova on the first shoot. Have a look at that supporting hand. It's a great hand hold that, like a glove. The rifle's so firm. Beautiful. Yeah, that's what she needed first time round. Helen will be uh, pretty satisfied with that, knowing that 19 out of 20 will give her a very good chance of hitting the top three. I and mean, she's been shooting well of late, so Davidova is out. Remember, number three won the race yesterday. 55 second lead. So it will be interesting. Will Marie Eder adjust her sights this time, or will she adjust them the next time? This is standing the second time in. I think she'll leave it for when she comes in the next prone. Yes, yeah, she hasn't gone to the sights yet. No, she's not going to adjust this time. Pulse rate still, uh, well, 1.59 now, now. It was 1.75 when she started that first shot. It's not going well. No comfort there whatsoever. I thought there was tension through that left arm supporting the rifle. And any tension, you feel it when you squeeze your trigger. It's a shame for the... What about Lisa Vitozzi? Nervous moment, 17 seconds, giving away five seconds to Dorothea Vera on that first shoot alone. But if they go down, yes. it's worth it. It is worth it. Good start. And uh, she will be just having a look. I think she's going to be a good, what, 15 seconds down on the leaders? Yeah. Um. Yep, 10.7, 10 so she's still well and truly there, a, a comfortable start.
Dorothea Vera exiting just behind her teammate, Roysland. When you, oh, wow, she broke that position very, very quickly, <laughs> but number, number five went down. I think it was back on her shoulders before the bullet hit the target. Oh. That was uh, remarkable stuff. I was just thinking, Mike, when you've had a long time away, not from training, although she's had to limit that dramatically, uh, which aspect of the sport do you find uh, deteriorates the quickest? Do you know, it's, it's a tough one. Um, she has been able to keep her physical side going, not quite where she was last year. I think the timing in terms of shooting, when you, have, when you haven't got a race bib on, it's different. You're more relaxed. The pressure of a, race, a World Cup uh, race bib is huge, and I thought she would have suffered more in terms of her shooting. She's got it all back now in just one week. Vanessa Voigt of Germany comes from Oberhof. Uh, don't need to tell you which event she's looking forward to this year and hasn't got long to wait. The 6th of February, the World Championships start in Oberhof. And if she hits five out of five in any race there, Mike, uh, the, the place is going to go <laughs> absolutely bonkers. It certainly will. Tandrevold, the similar routine, quite careful, quite slow but making them all hit for the second time. So Tandervold, uh, no mistakes so far. Roisland leading after the second shoot with 10 out of 10. Vera in second, uh, only 0.2 behind. Tandervold at 12.1. Camilla Zuckerpolen pushed down into fourth place at the moment. And the world champion, Markita Davidova of the Czech Republic, down in sixth, one uh, ten behind the leaders. This is Julia Simor. Oh, was that a little bit lucky? You need ah. luck, and she's got a little bit of, a, of it, and Julia Simon is coming out, and uh, the lead is going to change. She had a six-second lead coming in. She was uh, as quick, if not quicker, than Vera with the standing shoot, and the margin is going to be substantial. It is. I, just all of her body movements today, Patrick, the explosive, explosiveness through the, the lower leg there, much better than she was last weekend. I thought she was looking very tired, only her magic shooting it brought her to the podium on those occasions. Sweden zeroed on this lane, and uh, always best to get onto the lane in which you zeroed your weapon if you can. Erberg didn't race in Pukuka, taking some time to recover. Herman Vick getting the response of the crowd, and that miss not uh, popular at all. Erberg, he blocks it out. That is, that's an impressive shoot, because that's the loudest the crowd have been so far. And Hannah Erberg stayed 100% focused on her job and no one else's. What I found interesting, Patrick, Herman Vick there, each time a big-name German athlete comes in, the stadium music is switched off, quiet, so... As, a, as, a, as an athlete coming in, you're well aware that there's something has changed. The music goes off, and then you will feel even more that all the eyes are watching you if you're German. So I think that adds pressure onto their shoulders. And maybe distracts others uh, who are aware of what is going on. Oh. But, woof. Uh, another little slip. Uh, just having a look at the skis uh, in... in Annecy, Le Grand Bonnard, the, the problem was Fisher skis that lost their edges about halfway round the race. Uh, it was an extraordinary event that saw Johannes Tingisbo lose 20, 30 seconds to his rivals on a single loop. And that can't, that's never been said or done before. No, it, it, so, was, it, it was incredible. Can little sister follow big sister? Lucky needs to tighten it up. Everything a little bit low left at the moment. That was better. Down it goes. Five out of five. The nerves will recover, but she will get information about that second shot that was right on the edge. Well, little sister is, was running six seconds faster than big sister into the range and now so close to the top, 0.4 behind.
We're back to the start, and we're not even halfway through the starting list. To, we're close uh, with 101 starters, and uh, number 50 for Germany, Sophia Schneider. And uh, she did pretty well in the first race of the season, finished 11th in Contiolati, a match of that performance or an improvement, and she will become pretty much a permanent fixture in the German team. And I am, I do wonder about Sophia Schneider. This is her first experience at World Cup level with 20,000 spectators or 18,000 spectators around the track. A lot of pressure. Reuschland, uh, 13 seconds. She seems to have lost uh, some of her momentum, Patrick. That's, that might be a concern to the coaches. Yeah, I think conditioning, you know, that it's a long race, the 15K. And uh, I think if anyone's going to suffer, it will be her, Paulina Fialkova, who was very quick, uh, top five in terms of ski speed up in Pukuka, and uh, a decent shoot at just 24 seconds. Importantly, the five targets going down. Just missed the podium. Fourth in both races in Pukuka. Now, Markita Davidova, she cannot afford another miss. It was lack of discipline first time in when she missed one out of the five. And I think that was lack of discipline prior to the first shot. Frustrating, especially when the remaining four go down with apparent ease. She'll be so disappointed. Two minutes. She's not uh, Johannes Tingis Boer in terms of ski speed. She is very good, uh, but uh, that's just too much for her to pull back. Well, just having a look back at the first shoot, Mike, uh, because most of the big guns have been through that phase at the moment. Hermann leads for Germany. Erberg just 0.4 of a second behind. Julius Simon is there. Roisland is there as well. Notten, who started 34, has had a good race. And Hannah Erberg in the top six as well, just ahead of Dorothea Vera. It's going to be a tight race, isn't it? And Denise Hermann Vick, on the first lap time, she led by eight seconds, sorry, 2.7 seconds. And because she's missed a one target, she's really opened up the pace on her second lap. The Totsi up into the top five coming in. And uh, as you can see, went clear on that first shoot. 15 seconds, the margin between herself and Denise Herman. Lovely shooting, lovely shooting. Have a look at the time. Uh, we'll try and bring that up, but uh, that was as quick a shoot as we've seen as her teammate tries to rattle five down. This is Vera's third shoot and the last in the prone position. Five out of five. Thank you very much. The Italian's going well. You said uh, Vitozzi's shooting was fast. Yes, 22.9 seconds to get uh, from stop to start and put the targets down. Dorothea yeah. Vera is just loving this challenge. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not worried about her shooting, but in Contiolati, what was it? 0, 0, 0 or 0, 1, 0, 2. So she missed two out of five last time in. And that was the case at the Olympics as well. I think at the Olympics, it was three, it was. She missed, uh, yep, 0, 0, 0, and then three. But she won't be thinking about that. She may be thinking about the fact that she hit 29 out of 30 in Pukuka last week. Roisland with a miss and with uh, ski speed, we think dropping off a little bit. 16 seconds slower than Dorothea Vera. Last year, she would have been a minute 16 quicker than the Italian. Yes, yeah, so it will take time to get, especially the endurance of this longer event, the 15 kilometer. I think she'll drop her, her pace will drop away a little more as this race progresses. Voigt is one of these biathletes whose mindset is great, I think, for this event. Look at the discipline there, hasn't paid off. It's the Rupolding pressure. She's just trying to hold the breath a little too long. Uh, paid off uh, for the last four. So far, so good for Tandrevold. Yes. 
15 out of 15 for the Norwegian. Uh, if, if anyone, you know, she's a regular visitor to the top five, Mike, but she really deserves her second World Cup win. She does, um, and she's now, she's maturing all the time. And uh, with her yoga, she's learned how to calm down. Julie Simon, 14 out of 14. No mistake on number 15. She remains the uh, top athlete out there. 16 seconds, the advantage for Julia Simon coming in over Dorothea Vera. Vera was quick in the range, so that margin likely to be cut. It is by three seconds, <laughs> but Julia Simon still leading. One shoot to go for the World Cup leader. Uh, a win here would be her third of the season, but it would be her eighth podium finish. Incredible stats when uh, last year, Julia Simon, yes, she had great days, but they weren't regular. They are now. Where's your money here? S second shoot, first in the stand. I was going to say maybe f with the break that she's had, I thought she'd be slightly calmer. And uh, sometimes when you've had a little break from competition, you feel so connected with your rifle. Herman Vick sitting in fifth. Remember, she missed earlier on in the race, but uh, five out of five here. And she, oh, that's an expensive mistake, and the crowd know it. So Hannah Erberg misses, Herman Vick misses, and that plays into the hands of Julie Simon. But we still have Elvira Erberg to come through her second shoot. She started number 33, a minute and a half behind her big sister, and Herman Vick comes out 202 behind Mike with two misses. She would have been right on the shoulder of Julie Simon. Oh, what a pity. I did, uh, I, I did Dorothea Vera an injustice. At the Olympics, she shot 0-1, I knew that uh, it was a medal and possibly gold had she got those last uh, five. And uh, at the Olympics, I certainly expected her to get those last five. We'll have to wait and see, can she do it today? And she'll be coming in quite soon. Elvira Erberg coming into the range in second place, 3.4 seconds slower than Denise Herman, but Denise Herman missing in this second shoot. So this is an opportunity for her to go to the top of the leaderboard at the halfway stage. Look at the pulse rate on her watch. It was 178 beats a minute as she started shooting. Absolutely can't afford another miss now, but that's uh, an expensive mistake. I think she's going to find herself pushed down to uh, between 8 and 10 on the leaderboard. The top spot was there for the taking, but she has missed her opportunity. Down in 12. Two good breaths in between. Uh, she's, she really needs to suck that air in. That was that was great discipline under the roof holding pressure, which she hasn't felt before. Chevalier Boucher, the Olympic silver medalist in this discipline. She really, uh, her ski speed is good, but I, I, I looked at these uh, at the start list and I thought, well, she'll need to get 20 out of 20 for a, for a win. And even then, it depends on what Herman Vick and Roisland and the faster skiers uh, achieve on the day. And suddenly finds herself a minute 12 behind. I felt with Batoshka Fialkova, her last shot, she tends to rush it. I hope she remains calm. Oof. A little that's faster. healthy. Yeah, so that's, that's a great score. 15 targets, or shots fired, 15 targets down. So after three shoots, Julie Simon still the leader. Vera in second. Tandrevold is three. Batovska, Fialkova for Roisland down in five. Now, Akita Davidova, early starter. 
Two misses already. The top 10, I guess, beckoning if this goes down. It does. That's a nice finish. That was that was great discipline. She knew the, the importance of getting these five. One more minute would have been added had she missed one. And, and that's quite a lot of pressure when she's already missed two. So it's a good discipline there throughout. Be interesting stat in the four shoot races, Mike, to see whether the final stand has a better or a worse uh, percentage hit rate than the first stand. I think uh, I think percentage wise a lot higher. Julia Simon at the Olympics went zero zero one three. She missed three out of five at the Olympics. She's better than that now, but that shows the pressure on the last yeah. five. Yeah, pressure such a huge part. Vitozzi, well, she has her own pressure. And the cameras know that she is worth focusing on. She hit the first five in the prone. She's not hanging around. 2.0, 2.1, 2.1. Excellent. Very, very consistent shoot. She's got the 10. And that is as important as whatever result she gets. Did not expect Vera today to miss uh, any of the targets. The middle shot standing, it, it, it stayed up. Yeah, that is going to cost her, isn't it, Mike? Uh, she was leading. She's got a two-minute lead coming into that third shoot, but uh, fourth shoot. But it's uh, an early start for Dorothy Vera. And of the uh, Italians, Vitozzi has come out in third place, just 11 seconds down on Julie Simon. And it won't be long before Simon comes in for her last shoot. She started number 12, so uh, four minutes or so, and she should be back in the range. Great job. Yeah, that's good shooting from Yislava. Just looking at the results from five years ago, the last time it, it, this was a 15 kilometer held here, Vera, of course, hit the 20 out of 20 to win. But uh, remember, Rosanna Crawford uh, from Canada, the perfect score, getting on the podium for the first time. That was a big day for the Canadians. Certainly do, certainly do. and. Uh, the World Championships here back oh. in 2012. Does your memory go back that far? <laughs> Big leap. Yeah, the winner, one, uh, a, a people's uh, favorite, Tora Berger of Norway. Uh, she won on that occasion, 42.30 the winning time, ahead of Brunei of France, uh, Helena Ekholm, one of the best shots that Biathlon has ever seen in third, and Marie durant Abert, who, uh, made an impression in those world championships but really uh, was most impressive up in Contialati where she won uh, gold medals uh, just months after giving birth to her first child. Tandra Volt. Everything going nicely so far. 19 out of 19. No! Oh, the dreaded 20th shot and it denies her and oh. that is almost certainly going to cost her a shot at top spot. Uh, Oh, that's desperately sad, oh, Mike. That is so sad. I, I, she was there, she was stable, and then the brain starts flickering. I've done it, or I've not done it. I've won to, one more to go. It really has tripped her up. So, Julie Simon. Oh, same. There is her first miss. And I tell you, who'll be annoyed by that? And that's Dorothea Vera, because Vera had an opportunity. Only 11 seconds between them coming into that fourth shoot. And now we have a bit of a ski race on. Uh, Dorothea Vera, Mike, uh, you know, we, we, do, we know her as a quick shot and a good shot. Uh, but when she's on form, her skiing is quick. Maybe not the best in the top five and I think she's coming back to that sort of form she certainly is and it's so close after that fourth shoot with Simon only leading by 14 seconds Vera Tandrevold missing that shot third and we we saw Roichland she missed one out of that last five those four big names missing one target from the last last five amazing the pressure yeah, Herman Vick has already missed two, so she's out of contention for the top spot. 155 behind Simon, effectively 55 behind Simon now with that miss. Hannah Erberg in the top right hand corner of your screen on uh, sh shoot number three. She's down in eighth position coming in. Oh, Herman Vick misses again. Oh, so expensive. Three minutes added, and that is over a kilometre. Uh, and you can work that out in percentage terms. It's a 15K race, and uh, in three minutes, they probably do, what, 1,200 metres? 
That was incredible. You, if you know German, you know what she said when she put the rifle on, but uh, she would have been out had she got those five. One minute behind, and you know what? She could have still attacked for a top five today, missing two, not anymore, missing three. So Herman Vick still pushing, goes past Hannah Erberg, and that leaves uh, Julie Simon in pole position after the fourth shoot. Only 12 athletes through that stage at the moment. There will be changes. Just having a look to see who can challenge. Vitozzi Mike has a chance. Uh, if she can uh, clear all the targets, she's only 11 seconds down after three. And uh, Dorothea Vera, we know about, missing on that final shoot. And that, uh, she would have had a 45-second lead if she'd hit all five. Oh. Now, this is big for Elvira Erberg already missing she's back into the prone position needs to make sure of these and then prepare herself for the final shoot in the stand position i don't have that sort of the normal confident feel that i have with her but i think if there's a mistake coming it's probably going to be in the last stand certainly her shooting was was strong and focused just uh, six days ago in poku cup that's nice that is nice. So she lives to fight on and she wants to come out within a minute of the lead of Julie Simon. She's going to be over that. But uh, yeah, top three still there for the taking. 116 the margin. And down in seventh place at the moment, just behind her sister. Kamola missing one. Remember in Finland, the first day of racing this season, Kamola went zero. I thought that was great. Then she only hit one out of five in her first standing. And then she got the last 10. She went zero, four, zero, zero. Often you can just have one very shaky moment and then bring all your discipline back in for the final 10. So Kamola exits the range. She's got. She's still on a 98% hit rate in the prone position, which is absolutely <laughs> astonishing when you consider we're at the halfway stage of the season. This is race 11 of a scheduled 21, and then you can add the World Championship races onto that. Uh, the World Championship's not playing a part in the World Cup uh, standings, which you know some some approve, some don't. A little bit uh, divisive. It's a big change. I think a lot are feeling, well, Martin Foucault was saying, oh, if that was only the case in my day at the World Championships, you still had the added pressure of uh, thinking about points. Davidova into the finish after a very early start for the Czech and uh, comfortably inside the previous best time set by Sophie Chabot of France, who hasn't had the best of days. Five misses from her. Oh, Fialkova with another miss. And in, in the old days, you didn't bother about the one, you know, the odd miss. But nowadays, with the, the standard of shooting and the level of skiing in women's biathlon, you just can't afford a single mistake. Do you know what? Uh, Jean Monod shoots. Uh, Elvira Uber will probably be told on the track that all the athletes ahead of her, Simon Vitozzi, Vera Tandrevold, and now Botovska, have all missed one oh. target last time in, so Elvira can still win this race. <laughs> she's a minute 16, so she's got to do a bit of skiing, Mike. Um, yeah, well, well, the jury is still out as, as to whether her form has deserted her or whether she's changed the tactics. I, you know, I, th I think it's probably a little bit of both, isn't it? I think it is. The strategy has changed. Uh, Vera coming in, uh, she'll be so disappointed, missing one out of five last time. Good lead for her at the moment, but Julie Simon started uh, behind her, so she will see that lead disappear fairly shortly out on the tracks. Vera with a 17 second lead or a deficit to uh, Julie Simon. Lisa Vitozzi can win. Ho, ho, ho. 104. She makes it 20 out of 20 and makes up for the mistakes she made in the sprint event in Pakuka. She missed four and two in the sprint to finish 65th. She doesn't get a run in the pursuit. And I wonder whether that actually has helped her because she's just that little bit fresher than those that did all the races in Pakuka. I am so impressed with Vitozzi. Any athlete by athlete that misses, hits only one out of five in the sprint race, prone shooting, it really does destroy the confidence. And then she missed two in the stand. She's hit them all today.
Yeah, that's uh, excellent. And, you know, with the problems she had last year, Mike, uh, it will be a very, very popular result as well. It will. And she's very much back now. If she does win today, and I think she probably will at this stage, there's no one out there at the moment to, to challenge her. Royceland, only one miss. Uh, 40 seconds down on Dorothy Vera. So she pretty much matched the Italian for the first half of the race and fading. So I think uh, just a little bit of stamina required, and that will come with some more racing. Be interesting to see what she does between now and Oberhof. I'm assuming that Roisland is going to be included in the Norwegian team. Tandrevold certainly will be after another good race from her. One miss in the stand. Uh, really, she, she could have been the one challenging challenging for the lead, but uh, she's going to be 20 odd seconds behind. Vera leads at the moment, Tandervold into two, Roisland in three, and Yislava of the Czech Republic pushed out of the podium places. Here comes Simon, 28 seconds to play with and only 2.8 metres to go. She's got the lead by a decent margin, but I'm not sure this is going to be win number three. Vitozzi, Mike, with a 48-second advantage <laughs> over the French woman. It's incredible. Well done to Vitozzi to, to bring all of that magic, focus, concentration back after a very poor showing in Pocuca. It, it really is outstanding. Vanessa Voigt is, is always one of these very methodical process, process the athletes just control. She had, had missed one earlier on, which was a surprise, but uh, that is the only shot missed to date. 28.5, the shooting time. As we watch Herman Vick come in, Mike, and uh, this is going to be way below her best with three misses. Uh, over the, you know, from when you started biathlon, uh, a standing shoot was taking how long? Standing shoot there when I started was taking between 29 and 32 seconds. There was one Finnish athlete who modified his rifle to make it faster. Uh, and and um, yeah, 26 in those days was the best. The rifles have changed and, you know, the, the suit with all the stickiness on the shoot for the elbow and the hip and the depth and standing of the rifle stock, the wood is much deeper now, so you don't have to balance on your fingertips anymore. It's like a glove. So you can hold that rifle more firmly and more stable. Final shoot for Hannah Erberg. That's lovely. Oh. That would have put the prone down. That was just out to the left of the prone target. Number five goes down. Well. I think uh, with that one miss, she's just said, let's let them go. And uh, it's certainly going to help her cause. She will be fighting for uh, definitely for a top ten. That was it. That's how to do it, isn't it? No care in the world, just routine, routine, and she got them all. And Elvira take that. Erberg. Yeah, oh, sorry, Mike, I was just going to say Elvira Erberg uh, down in eighth place. She was four seconds slower than her sister coming out of the range last time. So we'll watch uh, her entry time into the final shoot. But I think Elvira, if she wants a top five, has got to hit the perfect score. I was so strong in terms of her ski speed. Uh, not the fastest, but always firm and strong and lasting the distance. But we'd expect more in terms of her shooting. Didn't quite produce it today on the range. How's a fifth place at the last split? She's been making up time, actually. Seventh to sixth to fifth on this last lap. Um, so she looks as though she's destined for a top 10. Vitozzi looks as though she's destined for the win here, which would be uh, a fantastic result for her. And, of course, uh, she got a second place in the sprint event up in Contiolati at the start of the season. Two successive podiums up in Contiolati. Elvira Erberg needs five to challenge for a top three. Rhythm seems to have deserted her. Four seconds in between three and four. Oh, my goodness, she was lucky. 
so, so <laughs> lucky. But we'll keep an eye on the exit coming out. Uh, Erberg was in seventh coming in, 122. So she's lost another uh, six or seven seconds to her sister. Uh, so the ski form going after that brilliant performance is up in Pukuka. How's it goes into five? Simon still the leader on 40-51. Here comes Vitozzi. She's been through 13.9. Uh, we'll be coming up to 14.3. There she is, 46 seconds. She's, lose, she's lost uh, a second to Julia Simon over the last kilometre. That does not matter. The margins are so massive that Vitozzi is certainly going to take the lead when she comes in. Uh, Chloe Chevalier, Mike, is uh, one athlete who might challenge. She's in second place at the halfway stage, having gone clear, starting number 60. Yes, it's not over yet, but it's amazed me today that all these big names who are starting at the, roughly the same time, Batovska, Fialkova was one of them, who've missed one out of five last time in. Yeah, it happened yesterday as well in the men's. Christiansen, Ligrid, Giacomel. Uh, I think Benny Dahl, does he, he missed on the penultimate shoot, but that cost him a shot at the win. Rastoguyev's going brilliantly yesterday. He missed on the last five. It's good to see it. There are a number of other athletes who've hit the perfect score. Stremus has done it. She's in position 11. Yislava. And Schlettermark, that will be Schlettermark's best ever World Cup performance at the moment in a 14th for Greenland. It's another good shoot. She has been shooting pretty well, to be uh, honest. Now, here comes Vitozzi. Is this going to be a famous win for the Italian? Uh, certainly looks like it at the moment. And uh, starting number 23, she crosses the line with a time of 40.05. That's uh, an absolutely outstanding performance. She's only had two wins in her career. It could be number three here in Rupolding today. But uh, certainly this, the Italians won't start celebrating quite yet, Mike, but they will be very, very happy that she hit 10 in the pro. They will. Jean Manot has uh, put in a brilliant performance. Slettermark's best, incidentally, is a 53rd point uh, position. Uh, it'd be great if she could actually um, get herself some World Cup points today. It certainly would. Jean Monod at the moment exiting the range 31.7 behind in second place. And I think she'll keep that ski speed. Uh, this is the biggest day of her biathlon career. And maybe she'll remain in second. Quite, a, quite likely she will. She's got a... What she got? 17 second advantage over Julie Simon. Uh, Vitozzi had 48 and has finished with a 46 advantage. So really uh, a 45 advantage. So only lost three seconds to Simon. Mona Brorson is uh, so strong and so reliable, especially in the relay. But the ski speed has deserted or coming back in after Christmas back into the team. Just feel the, the tension through. Again, the rhythm isn't quite there. Not back into a racing. And Jean-Marc will be very disappointed. Didn't expect that. Yeah, if a, if a shoot has ever been the problem for Brawson, it has been that final shoot. Hannah Erberg. Now, last time we saw her, um, she was in fourth position after the fourth shoot. Uh, she's still in fourth position at 13.9. She's in fourth at 14.3 uh, and getting closer and closer to Dorothea Vera. She's still got three seconds to make up on the Italian. And uh, this will be interesting to see whether the, one of her teammates can help her to uh, a top three position. Oh, she only needs to find three seconds to disappoint Vera and to put Hannah back on the podium after her Christmas uh, extended Christmas break. Elvira Erberg has gone from six to five at 13.9. Uh, looking at her speed relative to her sister, she was 18 seconds behind. Uh, oh my goodness, Mike, Elvira Erberg is absolutely flying on this last lap. 
Close Terrible. Chevalier. This is good from Chevalier. Yeah, but that miss, I think, has cost ah. her a chance of a top three. It has. That, at the time, I was just looking at her entry to the range time. Uh, she needed all five. 37, Jean Manu, yet to go through the 13.9. That will be a significant move when she does. She's in second place, coming out of the range. The, front, the French with a, an opportunity to get two podium finishes in this women's individual. Vitozzi, I think, is safe on 40.5. Being right the way back to the start. I can't see anyone starting too far down, Mike, who can challenge. I don't think so. Uh, with Chevalier Boucher missing, uh, she's put herself at a disadvantage. I did think at the start of the day, Patrick, the Urberg sisters, as they did last year, had a second and third, both on the podium. It's not going to happen today. She got close. She got close. She cut it from three to two, but uh, left her sprint just a fraction too late. And uh, Erberg gets ahead of Tanner Vold and Roisland. The Norwegians being pushed down. Uh, good run from Hauser. She looks as if she should stay top ten. Uh, still no word of Jean Monod. She must be close to 13.9. I thought she'd be through there. I really hope uh, nothing has happened. Uh, it's unlikely. Elvira Erberg uh, c coming out of the range very hard, Mike. I think she's paying the price now. Uh, she got to within 10 seconds of her sister. That margin has come down to nine, but she's into the last five, 600 metres now. And I don't think she's going to be able to overhaul Hannah. So uh, two Erbergs in the top five or six for the day, maybe six or seven. But... Uh, and the younger sister definitely putting pressure on the older one. Definitely. And uh, it's a pity the Urberg sisters, when you think of World Cup 1, they were setting the first and the second uh, best ski times. They've definitely dropped away, uh, especially after this Christmas break. Yeah, Jomano up to 13.9. She was second. She is still second. And uh, it's a question of whether she can hang on there. She had a lead of 17 seconds over Julie Simon starting this last lap. That lead is now 11 seconds. So uh, she's going to have to dig deep for the last 1.2. Uh, one kilometre as we see Elvira Erberg, I think five or six. Tan Revolta, 131, is going to be beaten. And... Uh, Hannah is safe in four. So Vitozzi leads. Julie Simon is second. Vera third. Erberg, Erberg, four and five with Hannah leading. But we still have Jean Monod who is charging for a podium. Heike Gross skiing much faster than we've ever seen in her career before. And uh, oh, two misses already. In the mix, really, on Sunday, Herman Vick thought she was safe in fifth position, and then Gross comes through, Heike Gross comes through like a rocket just in the last 10 metres, completely took Herman by surprise. Oh, Jean Manot needs to get more advice, more encouragement, or she may well lose this second place. Yeah, it's come down to seven seconds at 13.9, as we said. The margin was 11, uh, but she's only got 700 metres to go, Mike, and really only has, uh, a, what, 50, 60 metres of hard work. I can't see her losing seven seconds on the approach into this race, into no, the finish. No, and it's quite an easy profile. Once you descend down the final hill, it's a very easy track into the finish. So it's the Italians and the French who are going to be having uh, the extra bottle of vino on the table tonight, <laughs> I think, with Vitozzi winning here in Rupolding. Simon in second, possibly pushed down a three, but two French athletes on the podium. And Dorothea Vera with one miss, uh, 109 behind. Hannah Erberg with one miss, Elvira Erberg one miss. Uh, what have we got? Nine of the top ten, Mike, have hit 19 out of 20. It's really good shooting and no wind and the easiest range really to enter in terms of the whole World Cup and World Championships uh, ranges this year. Yeah, so we've got two Italians, two French, two Swedes, two Norwegians in the top ten. Who's going to win the relay? Oh, so tough. Uh, Italy will be feeling inspired and the underdogs, you never know, they could throw a surprise, but uh, probably the Swedes. Second might place. have some say in that. So, Jomano, brilliant performance, holds on, uh, still six seconds clear, and uh, nice that... Uh
French team are the first in to congratulate her. That's an ace, uh, Chevalier Boucher, just putting her arm around uh, Jean Monod. Well, what a fabulous effort. And actually, very good news for the French that it's not all about Julie Simon. Yes, uh, the, the, with Chavot uh, setting her great ski times. Here's Tamara Steiner. It's that... Um, yes, that's a perfect 20 out of 20. Now, let's have a look for the position. The ski speed isn't there, but I would suspect this is going to be a PB. Jomino, incidentally, her previous best was sixth position. And so that came... Uh, where was that? That was actually in Annecy this year, uh, where we saw some really good... Uh, results magnuson of sweden jomano showing what she could do but uh, she's gone a whole lot better than sixth today sitting in second place amy Perserga, mike uh, the swiss delighted with their mixed relay results in pukuka and what sort of a future does amy have uh, i th honestly think so bright we saw her didn't we in over tiliac at the junior worlds just looking brilliant with two wins there and she was very emotional, actually, on her first ever World Cup podium with Hartweg on Sunday. The tears were flowing. Uh, didn't expect that. She's pretty good uh, in terms of all her skills, but maybe the pressure getting to Basirga after that uh, podium position on Sunday. She's only 22, so uh, long future ahead of her as we have a look at uh, Chevalier's time, 1.27. In terms of perfect scores, um, what have we got? Uh, we had two in the men's race yesterday. We've, We've got certainly six. got five uh, with with uh, a couple of athletes still out there who've hit the perfect score. Yeah, no, I'm seeing six uh, already and uh, many still to go through. That's only 48 athletes through the fourth shoot to this point. That's pretty yes. good going, six clears. Yeah, excellent. And... Do you think the, the conditions are, uh, the weather conditions, not as, they were pretty nasty yesterday, a lot of rain, and much slower because they hadn't salted them. So, it, it is in the men's defence, uh, they had tougher conditions to contend with? I, I think they did. Uh, this, the flags uh, yesterday were slightly more uh, aggressive in terms of wind movement, and, and that really is what keeps the rifle steady. But still, I thought we'd see more yesterday than just two of the men hit the perfect 20 targets. Only 2% of the best biathlon field in the world. It's never easy to do it. And, you know, these big names, uh, Simon, Vera, Oberg, Oberg, Tandrevold, Reuschland. Uh, well, one of the Obergs didn't miss uh, any of the last five, but all the other big names did. One target out of the last five. Chloe Chevalier, like her older sister, Chevalier Boucher, they have quite a big eye relief from the eyeball to the rear sight, but it works for them. Ah, except the last shot. So Chloe Chevalier, another of the, the big names, missing one out of five from the last five shots, having shot so well prior to this time in. Fifteenth position. She's got a lot to fight for now, Chevalier, on the track. Well, that's a great attacking skiing. Good reach up uh, with her left hand. Vincent Vito is the former cross-country skier, the team manager, the team leader, giving that accurate advice before the last three kilometres. Yeah, what, a, what an impact he had when he joined the team. Uh, and really, if you, you match his arrival with the, the rise of the post uh, Poiret era. Yes, the, the post four card era. Well, actually, he was involved in the four card times as well. So, uh, but, you know, just the, the strength in depth that the French had after he, he had introduced his training techniques. Yes, it certainly gelled them and lifted them. And I thought it was something of a surprise. Normally, biathlon coaches or bi retired biathletes turned biathlon coaches and you represent your team as a coach after serving so many years. 
And uh, I thought it was strange, a cross country, top class, although he is coming across to the new sport of biathlon. But with so many sports, Mike, you break it up and you get the best of the uh, yeah. cross country coaches uh, and the best of the shooting coaches and you gel them together and you probably have someone who makes sure they continue to yeah. talk to each other. Uh, and we, we've seen that in many, many sports. We have Shervatova. Remember that great day in Antholt at the World Championships in the sprint competition? She took the bronze medal that day, not quite on the same spark. In fact, that was her only podium. Lena Heike Gross, her fans in Engelberg will be watching on and I guess just a little bit disappointed with the two misses, but 16th place. Well, we must have 10, 11 nations represented in the top 20. And if you do it quickly, Mike, uh, Greenland are sitting there in 20th position with uh, Slettermark's 20 out of 20. She's 3.14 off the lead, but that is a PB by a country mile. It, it really is. It's outstanding. Her father raced here, remember, in 2012. Uh, when the World Championships came here, I think he was 117th in this race, the distance race. <laughs> so... His daughter is really uh, organized and she's got a bright, bright future. Yeah, 12 nations in the top 20 at the moment. Fruvert with two misses earlier on. This is her fourth and final shoot. You can see some of the standing shots. That makes me feel better when you see how far <laughs> some of them miss by. <laughs> it's it's surprising some of the targets are cleaner than the others and you it does affect your sight picture a little seeing all the rim of black it doesn't make the picture through your sights quite as crisp and clear another good reason to go in group number one although most of them favor it because the snow conditions tend to be better and uh, schneider across the line, take those three minutes away. A 137 deficit would have seen her into the top eight. Uh, but that's a sort of a calculation that she will make at some time this evening. I'm just thinking as the race goes on, Patrick, uh, with the World Championships coming up quite soon, and in this big prestige race at home, the best German position is 11th, and then you've got to go further down to 15th, and then... 27th. Uh, it's not a great day for the German women. Yep, I think the stands might be empty on uh, on Saturday for the women's relay. Big, scary new experience for Kikiri in terms of World Cup. And that's exactly what it is, isn't it? No, no expectation. Uh, just get used to the World Cup atmosphere and Roop holding as good a place as any. And the crowd's so close here compared to uh, many of the venues. And she's a uh, Kikiri, she's only 19, like uh, Johannes Tingis Bo was uh, when he first joined the World Cup, but he actually won when he was 19. Another perfect shoot uh, from Steiner this time from Austria. Well, what a day for the Italians. Lisa Vitozzi has gone and taken the win here in Rupolding. No one else is uh, going to match her. She started number 23, uh, two wins in her career prior to this. So this makes it through, well, they say seventh career there. They're, one of my stats is wrong. And Vitozzi, of course, who had a great battle with Dorothea Vera to win the overall World Cup. She lost that, and actually, I think that affected her psychologically as well as anything else. But brilliant shooting from her, and uh, so many people delighted to see her get to grips with the shooting. This is her final shoot, and uh, a look of relief more than anything else on her face. I'm, I'm surprised with these graphics as well. I've got her, um, from my memory and my record, uh, only two victories, uh, both in Oberhof. 
Well, I'm, I'm with you. But so I think they must two. be looking at relays and mixed relays. Yeah, I don't think we I don't think we count them. She's been on the podium plenty of times. Uh, I think this must be her 17th time on the podium. So take that uh, caption with with a pinch of salt. But uh, what you can't do is dismiss the fact that Vitozzi has gone and got a victory here. No one else is going to get anywhere near her time. She'll be a bit disappointed, Mike, that we haven't got a pursuit following the individual, where I know they cut the deficit in half when they do do that. But uh, a 15-second lead would have been very handy. It certainly would. And isn't it biathlon a great sport for one weekend you can finish 75th and just seven days later, six days later, you can win the race. It's loaded, uh, of course, uh, you don't expect the form to drop that much in terms of shooting, but she only hit four out of ten last Thursday and didn't even get a start in Saturday's race. Yeah, she missed four in the prone, two in the stand on that occasion. So, um, yeah, swings and roundabouts. Uh, had she had another bad day, Mike, uh, I wonder whether that would have put her back to last season's uh, sort of mindset. It, quite possibly, but but isn't it incredible how her mindset, her performance today, her focus, and, and just even the skills. When she missed her four out of five in Pokyuka, they were all high, at a nice tight group. So it really is just discipline in the setup of the position, and she anchored all that today. Chloe Chevalier, uh, her PB is eighth position, so she's not far off that. 251, the margin. Now, if uh, Chevalier had hit uh, just one more, 151 would have put her into the top 10 just behind Roisland. So uh, Italy and France delighted. They've got two apiece in the top four. Uh, Sweden have got five and six. Norway have got seven and eight. And then Austria and Slovakia in nine and ten. Lisa Theresa Hauser, Mike, one miss, 159. So effectively, she's a minute slower than the best at the moment. Yeah, it's quite, quite, uh, quite amazing, a loss of form. Great to see Darcy uh, from Australia there coming in for her stand shoot. Just looking down to see those who've missed targets but could have won. Herman Vick down in 15th, uh, 2.43 deficit, but she missed three targets. So if she'd hit all 20, she could have been a possible winner. There are, well, Julie Simon could say the same. She was fast enough to win. And I think they are the only athletes who would have overtaken Vitozzi had they shot the perfect score. Darcy Morton, uh, the pulse was low there. She'll be a little disappointed. She came in with three penalties, picked up another two. And off she goes. So we've had some pretty unusual podiums so far this year. And I think the fact that uh, Lou Jean Monod is on there again, a uh, little bit of a surprise, certainly, to be the best of the French team here today. Uh, two of the top three have hit the perfect score today. Vitozzi, you know about. Jean Monod also achieving that. And she was in pretty good form last week in uh, Pukuka with a 10th and a 13th place. But uh, nothing to write home about compared to what she's done here in Rupolding today. She'll remember this day the rest of her life and she'll remember every moment of the, what she was thinking, how she controlled those 20 perfect shots. And, and when, you, when you achieve it, it actually feels easy. You think, well, that was nothing special. I just, I just let them go at the right time. And that, it's almost as simple as that. It's the brain and everything else that gets in the way a lot of the time. But would you rather finish second having missed a target or finish second having hit the perfect <laughs> score but still find yourself 40 seconds off the best? I hear what you're saying. Um, yeah, I think, but she's got a way to go, hasn't she? She's so young in this sport that uh, Jean Monod will find faster skiing. I think getting the 20, it means that she can do it again and again now that she knows that path, how it feels. Just looking back to the uh, halfway stage, Amy Berserger of Switzerland 
uh, actually put in a really good first half of the race. Started number 71 and was uh, up in the top 10 at the halfway. And then uh, she missed targets on her third shoot, which pushed her down a 23rd. And uh, she's missed two in total. So down in 24th after the final shoot. Roy Vert, uh, this shooting is, is OK, missing only two out of 20. Future biathlete, not interested in the race. Yeah, the little one might take it up as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we've still got 40 or so to come across the line. And um, that will take another at least 20 minutes as we have a look at the top three. Julie Simon, she's back on the podium, Mike. You can't keep her down. And uh, good news for her today is that she has beaten Elvira Erberg. Not by a massive amount, but she's beaten her. And that will just extend her lead. She had a 31-point lead. That's going to be closer to, uh, closer to 40 after today. And as we look at Jean Manoe, for Simon, what a, an incredible season. Eight podiums, 11 races. She just can't do much wrong. The consistency of her shooting is excellent. And Vitozzi to bring it back from only four hits out of 10 last weekend to hit 20 out of 20. That is a brilliant turnaround. And they're happy. <laughs> Yeah, so, so they should be. Uh, and, and Vitozzi dropping all the way to ninth last weekend in Pakuka, a uh, 65th in the sprint, and then failing to, uh, well, didn't qualify for the pursuit. So uh, suddenly she's picked up the full quota of points, and that gives her 90, which will take her back up to 463 points. I think probably she'll be in uh, fifth, sixth, fifth or sixth position come the end of the day. Nina Hettig-Waltz, really good in Oslo last year, the end of the season, the PB of fifth. She's not going to match that today, and that goes wide. That's a real shame to miss the last shot, but as you pointed out, Mike, so many of the big names did exactly that. It, it was a big surprise. Normally, you'd expect from the big names, about 20% of them, two out of 10 of them would... Uh, Three out of ten would miss on those last five shots, uh, but they seem to feel the pressure here today. There's Yoni uh, Kokinen, has been coaching the Americans on the right side as we look. He's played a huge part in the turnaround. And Alexander Indersch, uh, the new head coach, so a big change in the Italian system after the Olympics. So, World Cup points coming the way of Amy Berserga, but not as many as she might have thought when she went through the halfway stage. And uh, Berserga was right up there in ninth position, having hit the first 10 shots. Julie Simon, eight podiums from 11 races. Uh, her worst result, a 16th, which was the second race of the day, but that is uh, as low as she's dropped on the order. And it's just that consistency of getting into the top three. Uh, she's skidding, perhaps not her fastest, but she's certainly shooting as well as she has ever done. She extends her lead in the World Cup standings. Uh, I think I underestimated it. I think she's going to be up close to 51 points clear uh, by the end of today. Obviously, it depends on everyone's finishing positions rather than just her own. But 60 points for finishing in third. At the moment, uh, we have Elvira Ergberg down in sixth, which is worth 40 points. <laughs> Rapidly uh, approaching level that uh, may give her claim to being the best French female biathlete. Who would you put up there at the moment, Mike? Sandrine Bailly, uh, for me, her name stands out with, uh, what was it, 30 or 16 wins? I, I haven't got the stat in front of me, but she was so regular uh, challenging at the top. 
Joanna Bear, is she there? She's definitely there in be. the top three, and uh, Coco from way back in 1992. It's good to see the Austrians, uh, not just Lisa Theresa Hauser, but many now of the team are able to hit targets and hit them really well. Yeah, that was a nice shoot from Jupe uh, of Austria. You could just feel the energy after hitting those last five out of five. You feel so elated, and you could just see the spark trying to get the ski poles on now. And, and uh, into 23rd position. She has never won herself a World Cup point, Mike, so today could be a huge day for her. Her PB prior to this is 41st, and uh, Zoup has got a bit of skiing to do now, but the 23-year-old who lives in Villach will be... Uh, pushing hard, 3Ks to go. I think when you've cleared the last five, the first of those 3Ks is pretty easy. <laughs> then it hurts. So there will be no changes in the top 10 positions. It's okay, but you know her, her ski speed has let her down. I think she was 50 seconds or so off the pace in the sprint in Pukuka, so you'd expect her to give away a couple of minutes over the snow alone. Well, that was an incredible turn of pace from Colombo up the, the final climb there. The coach is hounding her to, to bring some more speed to her end result and move up the result sheet four places potentially. It was good to see Darcy Morton there and the support she had trackside. Her father, a former biathlete as well. Okay. Patrick Valtz. It's uh, from her start number. This is a very, very good run indeed. Uh, and she has gained a couple of places since she left the range. So this uh, is uh, certainly the advantage of racing at home. She's got a lot of support out there. Goes past the Norwegian without any problem at all. And number 90 was 27th uh, last time we saw her. She's pushed that up to 25. She's 3.44 off the leading time. If she can keep that under four minutes, then she's going to go into the top 25 today. Colombo just finishing and uh, goes into 28th position. The French uh, have ahead of her Chevalier Boucher in 23, uh, Chloe Chevalier in 16, and then, uh, of course, we have Julie Simon sitting in third, one place behind Lou Jean Monod, uh, who is in second place, just 39 seconds off today's winner. Lisa Vitozzi with her third World Cup win. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but it's been on the cards this season, hasn't it, Mike? It, it really has, um, and, and, you know, then it can open the floodgates when it does happen. The confidence uh, raises up. Just looking, uh, we've got confirmation that uh, Vitos's results, it was uh, including relays as well for those seven wins. Well, that's slightly unusual in that we, we never really include the relays because it, it, it puts the Norwegians into triple figures. <laughs> <laughs> um, it certainly yeah, does. Halfway through the season now, Mike, and uh, time to sort of predict what's going to happen. Julie Simon, as I say, with that close to 50-point lead in the World Cup standings, Erberg in second, Herman Vick in third, Tandravold there in four, Vera in five. Anyone outside that top five, firstly, who can challenge for the win? Uh, do you know what? I think, uh, I think Vitotti, if she can hold on to this feeling she had today, which she, she was disciplined throughout December, she was in third, remember, until that poor 
poor performance last weekend. If she gets all of her spirit back, I think she could challenge. And, and, and I think we could expect Julia Simon at some point to lose a World Cup in terms of the magic shooting she's been providing. So a lot of changes can happen in the second half of the season. Yeah, in a, in a way, it's a shame that Oberhof doesn't count towards the World Cup because they might be the only windy conditions that we get all season. Uh, and we haven't, we haven't had a wind test as yet this year. No one's had to shoot in really difficult conditions. And uh, as uh, Hetish Valls comes in, that was good ski time to move up, as she has done. Yes, last year we had many more windy days and, uh, and it brings a different kind of biathlete to the... To the generally, you get the same names, but it does allow some of the big names who can deal better with windy conditions to move ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that will be a test, but uh, Tandravold is good in the wind. Uh, Herman, I don't think I'll be putting my money there if they have a couple of windy World Cups. Uh, Dorothea Vera, she's not phased by a bit of wind. So uh, absolutely, the, the, the positions could well change. Uh, but Julie Simon, she'll be delighted with a 50-point lead going in to the last set of 10 races. Now, Julie Simon's closest rival in the overall World Cup, of course, is Elvira Erberg. And today finishes in sixth position. I think after today's race, Mike, we can confirm that, it, you know, that the form is starting to fade. Yes, and I think that when Elvira Erberg still provides, you know, to good results, she's still winning good points, finishing... Uh, six today, and that is a really off form in terms of her skis. Normally, she could actually achieve about a minute faster in this race when she's in her best form. Not six quite today, yeah. Seven, yeah. Seven, seven wins in her career. Maybe they got Vitotti confused with uh, Elvira Herberg. No, I've seen confirmation and uh, the printout what they've been looking at to come up with uh, with the seven. So still this, her final shoot. Still fascinates me the level the, the level of her pulse rate when she risks shooting. Oh, that high right shot finishes it off, but that would have made a big big difference. You know, the season could come down to that one shot alone, Mike. Uh, it's going to be so tight come the end of the year. Uh, Oberg into fifth at the time, but with Jean Monod's performance, she's been pushed down into sixth, uh, just behind her sister. But there are some huge names in that top six. And, and, and I guess, Mike, justification for why you say the longer individual races is the real test of a biathlete. <laughs> I think it is. It's... Uh... And you saw great biathletes there today. They they're all in the top ten, really beginning to feel pressure when when there is that much pressure on hitting these targets in this race, much more so than in any other race. I think it really does uh, test and bring out the best in the biathletes. A winning time of 40 minutes, uh, so just one one minute add added uh, is what 2.2%. Uh, for every shot missed, and that's as high as it is in any race. Very satisfying result there for you. Best ever. Well, let's have a look at the older of the two Erberg sisters who really came to prominence when she got a gold medal in the 2018 Olympics in Pyeongchang. Uh, had a good World Championships in Osterson, Mike, but the, the form not quite as consistent over the last 18 months. No, to take a, an Olympic gold medal in this event and a year later take at home under the pressure of a home crowd to do it again the year later, I thought we'd see Hannah Erberg, you know, at, like Johannes Tingisbo is now, I thought she was going to leap head and shoulders above the rest of the field. She's still great, but uh, has some bad days on the rifle. Yeah, you have to wonder how much her younger sister has, <laughs> has to uh, pay, for, pay for that, simply because, uh, you know, she gets competition at the races, obviously, but she gets competition when they're training together as well. <laughs> 
Yes, they, they share a room and they do train a lot together, don't they? So many of the big names missing on the last shoot. Hannah Erberg managed to clear five. Her miss coming a little bit earlier on in the race. Had she hit all 20, uh, she still wouldn't have won. She would have been 10 seconds down on Lisa Vitozzi, which tells you Vitozzi is uh, on her best form, as is Dorothea Vera. So the uh, Italians obviously tar targeting the world championships, and uh, they'd li they'll like to do well next week, of course, in Antols. Yes, and I don't think, as uh, there's Hannah Uber crossing the line, uh, I don't think we can write off uh, Dorothea Vera. That's three World Cup races now in a row. She's been on the podium. Oh, sorry, she's fourth to date. 